In the last video, we we arrived at this formula for the ter for the Taylor series expansion of a function. And in this video, I want to do an example, and the example I'm going to use is is a pendulum, just to go along with the the simulation for approximations with pendulums that that I I showed in my other video. So just briefly, we know that the the relevant force when we're dealing with a pendulum is the is the force tangential to the to the arc along which the pendulum travels. And if we if we do our our trig here, we we can we can know that this is the sine of theta. And so the relevant force is is the mass times the acceleration due to gravity times the sine of theta. And theta is the this angle here. And then and then we can also say that since since this pendulum will oscillate around x equals zero, the 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 terms were or the value of a that would make sense to pick for this for this situation is is a equals zero since 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 theta equals zero and, and that's and that's the value around which this will oscillate. We know our values of theta will be pretty close to zero. So now let's let's use this Taylor's Taylor expansion formula to to look at how we can approximate sine theta. So if sine theta and I'm and I'm ignoring these constants out front since they'll just come to the outside. So I'll just approximate sine theta. So sine theta is approximately equal to the first term, the zeroth derivative of of sine theta is sine theta and and sine theta if you evaluate it at a which is zero in this case sine of zero is zero so there's our first term now our next term where n equals one we'll take the first derivative we'll get a cosine of zero cosine of zero times x minus a to the n and since a equals zero and x equals one we just write x so x to the first power, and then and then divided by n factorial. And since n is one, this is just divided by one. And then to save room, I won't write it. And since since cosine of zero is one, we can just cross this out. And and so far we just have zero plus x. So let's evaluate our third term. Our third term here is the second derivative of sine, which is negative sine. And since the sine of zero is still zero, this this next term is zero. Minus zero or, or just plus zero. And the next term is the third derivative of sine, which is which is negative cosine. So we'll have this minus sine here, cosine zero times x cubed over 3 factorial which is 6 and then there will be more terms so here we have 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 a series expansion for sine theta and it's it's a polynomial which makes it easier to work with than than most other functions so we can say that if theta is small enough and i've i've written x here instead of theta so I'd, i'll pause it and replace these with theta since since this might be a little confusing since Theta appears over here and x appears over here, but I'll fix that. So here we are with our thetas back in our equation, the way it should be. So so by looking at this, we can see that if theta is small, theta will be small, but but theta cubed is way smaller, and plus it's plus it's divided by this factorial term. So 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 for small enough values of theta, we can just we can just say, eh, you know. It's not worth the effort since this is such a small function or su such a small value for most cases. We we aren't concerned with it, and and we just want to use this, which will get us most of the way to the answer and will be nice and easy. And actually, now I realize I should have put a minus sign to use a uh, coordinate system that makes a little more sense, so that so that. When sine of theta is positive, it's moving. It's, it's moving this way. It's moving back to center. That's the force 
pushing it back toward the center. And so if we if we instead of saying sine theta, we just use the use theta, we get that our force, tangential force, is equal to minus m g theta. It's just a just a life it's it's the equation of a line. And if we so if we use a force, a restoring force that's proportional to the first power of the displacement, which is theta in this case, this this gives us the, the equations for the simple harmonic oscillator. Oops. Undo that. The equations for the simple harmonic oscillator. And so so when you're taught that a pendulum is a simple harmonic oscillator, that's actually an approximation. And and it's a little bit tougher if you if you use sine, you get slightly different equations of motion. But in, in most beginning physics classes, or probably every beginning physics class, you'll look at pendulums and you'll learn about harmonic oscillators and you'll use this equation. And so this is pretty close, but not quite exact. And you'll, if you go to that that interactive simulation, you'll you'll see that when you take it to a bigger angle, this this term starts to get to get significant, and then you you end up with pretty different motions between the approximated pendulum and the real pendulum. So I'd encourage you to go play with that, or or maybe find other find other functions you can approximate using this. So now we've seen where the Taylor series expansion comes from and, and how it can be useful.